hydrolocking boat engines. What does that even mean? I actually did a poll recently and asked how many of you have heard of hydrolock? And the majority of you said you'd never even heard of hydrolock. I hadn't either. So I researched hydrolock and here's what it is. What hydrolock is, is water in the cylinders. What happens is when your piston and valves come together, normally it's gasoline and air. The gasoline and air comes in, the piston comes up and that can compress that gasoline and air to cause the explosion. When there's water in there, if water is coming to that cylinder, water doesn't compress and it causes major components to break. You can bust crankshafts, bend rods, bust valves, all kinds of other things can happen. Hydrolock comes from, well, the word hydro, which is water and lock, to lock up your engine. And it's a big thing with regards to inboard outboard engines. With inboard outboard boats, they're using a car engine mounted very low in the boat. And so hydrolock can occur when water intrudes into the cylinders of that engine. And water always tries to level itself out. So if you have water in the exhaust system and the engine sits low, anything that changes that momentarily can potentially push water back towards the engine. Now, how does the water get in? The way the water comes in is because a gasoline four-stroke engine has valves. And the exhaust valve, which is open, to let the exhaust gases out, with a wet exhaust system on one of these boats, water can backflow through that exhaust valve coming into the cylinder. And that's how you get hydrolock. And hydrolock can happen three different ways. The first way is pretty obvious. It's from a large wave coming over the back of your boat. If a large wave comes to the back of your boat, it can actually force water back up through the exhaust into the engine. And that's where you don't want water. You do not want water in your cylinders of your engine. The second way it can come is from timing issues with your engine or shutting your engine off while under speed. For example, if your safety lanyard were to pop off as you're going 3000 RPMs, that stopping of the engine rapidly could potentially cause water to come back through the exhaust and actually hydrolock your engine. Another way that hydrolock can actually happen is if your engine timing is way off. Now this is much more important with people who have performance engines or have worked on their boat themselves and are messing around with the timing. But if your engine timing is way off, somewhere along the way, your engine can actually run backwards for a second. If the timing is not set right and your engine actually runs backwards for a second, that can cause water to suck back through because once again, you have a wet exhaust system. And so it can actually suck water in through the exhaust valve as the engine is running backwards. Once again, providing for a hydrolock potential situation. And then one of the other ways is when launching your boat. That's right. You can actually get hydrolock by launching your boat. So here's what's really interesting. When you're launching your boat, that is where hydrolock can commonly happen. And it's one of those things that most people wouldn't even think about. As you're coming down the boat ramp, if your boat ramp is steep or you're approaching it rather quickly, the back end of your boat, the stern, can get very close to the water line and you're pushing your boat into the water. As you're pushing your boat into the water, water could actually forcibly go up through the exhaust into those risers and manifolds and actually get into your cylinders whenever you do that. And once again, this is talking about inboard outboard engines or inboard engines or stern drive engines, I guess, as well. Now, many exhaust systems actually have a flapper somewhere in the exhaust system to try to keep water from coming back through. However, one of the things I've learned is that as a lot of people rebuild these engines and redo these risers and manifolds, a lot of times they leave out these flappers because it's another component that can fail. So you literally could be launching your boat at the boat ramp, backing it down, getting it into the water, hop in your boat to start your engine and experience catastrophic engine failure instantaneously because of the fact that your engine is hydrolocked. So when you go to launch your boat, Keep in mind that there's a possibility you could hydrolock your engine, especially if you're racing down the ramp. So what do we do to prevent it? Well, one of the things that's important is launching your boat slowly. If you launch your boat slowly, 
you give the back end of the boat a chance to rise with the water and you're not forcing water to press up against the engine and the manifolds and the exhaust. Another way to do it is as you're launching your boat, whenever the water intake is underwater, is starting your engine at that point in time and having your engine run because that will give just enough pressure going through there so that way water doesn't come back into your, into your combustion chamber. And then of course, making sure that your engine does not shut off at high RPMs. Because if your engine sh suddenly were to shut off while underway, there is a possibility that water could come back through. So what do we do if we do realize our engine is hydrolocked and we haven't done any catastrophic damage yet, or we're not sure if we have? The first thing to do is pull the spark plugs. That's the easiest way to open up that combustion chamber to let water out. If you take your spark plugs out and you have somebody crank over the engine, if your engine is hydrolocked, you should see water coming out of a few of those spark plug holes. As you crank it over and water comes out of those spark plug holes, that should expel most of the water. Maybe spray a little something inside of there, put the plugs back in and start it up and give it a try after that and cross your fingers. Hey, if you have some more comments or stories about hydrolock, please be sure to put them in the comments below. I love to read those. And one other thing, here's a video that YouTube is recommending you watch right after this one. So there you go. Go ahead and watch that video right now. Looks like it's a good one.